everyone, I am Master Rabbit Man, and today I will be talking about um the scripts I've made so far. I will not do voice acting because that was freaking cringe. Rather, I will be talking about the movies I am developing. So far, I am writing it. Well, yeah, but I've been animated here and there. And basically... The premise is that the movie, the animated movie universe I'm going to make is completely fan-made. It is a fan fiction. It is satire and it is supposed to make fun of real-world events. Particularly ones from the 2010s all the way to the 2020s. Now obviously the script will be updated each year as it is de being developed. But so far, I have decided that I will likely make this a comic i'm not sure but it will mostly be an animated movie universe in the end now you're probably wondering what are what is the story of Badji animated universe now growing up when i was young i imagined as as i said in the previous video i imagined talking to cards and characters superhero characters growing older I wrote it in Wattpad, and I garnered some views. Wrote it in Archive of Our Own, garnered even more views. Now, that inspired me to create a crowdfunded project that will mostly be about, well, yeah, that. The Bachi Animated Universe. Anyway. I will be talking about what the story is even about, like the plot this time. Chapter 1 takes place right after Stone Ocean Aftermath, or Stone Ocean. It will be different, it will be a different story from the original part 1, because this is, this first movie will be the third part. Description In a gripping fan sequel to Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean, the story follows Miguel Jojo, a brooding and complex figure with a tragic past. Miguel grappling with his own demons and a convoluted legacy uncovers a dark secret behind his family's history. As he delves deeper into the mysterious of, mysteries of the Jojo lineage, alongside a diverse group of allies, including a space wizard, a no-nonsense cop, an enigmatic sharpshooter, a brave knight, and his conflicted father, Miguel faces intense battles and profound personal revelations. His journey is marked by themes of redemption, legacy, and the harsh realities of his role in a world filled with danger and deception. The film is set to explore the grim realities of the Philippine politics and society. It is described as a social commentary of the Philippines, a satire. But it is not a comedy. It is a drama. It is a horror comedy, dark comedy, dark fantasy, supernatural, drama superhero movie emphasis on drama because this movie is mostly a drama there are some com comical scenes in it however the problem is is that it is mostly dramatic it is emotional it is supposed to be a way for me to honor the not only the philippines but also jojo's bizarre adventure it is a complete alternate universe fan fiction it is not meant to act as some sort of woke thing that Hollywood does or nor does it supposed to be um supposed to falsely advertise any other race other than the Philippine people that's why it takes place in the Philippines and I really enjoyed this making this movie even though it's the least popular in the YouTube polls but I enjoyed it I enjoyed what it was and what it is. There are some horrific scenes in it. And I remember, despite the, there's only one comic relief in the entire movie. Bummer. But it's a drama. But it will mostly focus on, well, Miguel Jojo, which is a variant of Jotaro Kujo. The Reaper and the Origins of Jojo. That is the second movie. Description, the Reaper and the Origins of Jojo is set in present day, where the Reaper, having kidnapped Yoshiko Kira, 
Oh right, I forgot. The main antagonist for the first movie, The Reaper and the Starter's Crusaders, is Yoshiko Kira, which is a variant of Yoshikage Kira. I'll lay out details on how that works over and over, and it she'll be hinted on the entire film. However, she in the beginning of the movie, she will already be name-dropped, so it's no surprise there. But who she is, who she particularly is, will be a surprise. Okay, back to the Reaper and the Origins of Jojo. He kidnapped Yoshiko here. Asks her details about the past of his family line with terrifying revelations. The movie is set as an anthology anthology film, set with three different portions. Well, now two different portions. I've concluded, the story of Simon and the story of Arthur Jojo. Miguel's origins has already been explained. It acts as a social commentary for the politics of Philippine history. It's a horror comedy, dark fantasy, supernatural, and period piece movie. The main antagonist is Dio. Or at least a variant of Dio, who was reborn as the new Dio. Dio Bernardo Salvi, which is a variant of Brando, Dio Brando, or and Diego Brando. The Reaper at the End of the World. The Reaper at the End of the World is a conclusion to the trilogy, exploring the final adventures of the Crusaders amidst the destruction of the universe, with the hope still remaining in the end. This is described as the ending of the series. It's a horror comedy, dark fantasy, supernatural, and superhero movie. This kind of ends in a bummer, just saying. But there will always be hope. And it is the first entrance to the most co- comical and comedic version, you guys' favorite, the Jazz Fusion. The Jazz Fusion, Miguel Josuke Higashikata, is a normal kid who meets a space wizard and a vigilante from a previous universe which hence the crusaders the pair assemble a team consisting of him and his childhood heroes hopefully to bring back the vigilante's world from destruction only for him to battle against a strange and deadly villain from the distant multiverse it's a dark comedy dark fantasy supernatural and superhero movie with humor very similar to smiling friends and drama similar to rick and morty even though it's satire it's comedic there are still very depressing moments in the movie is it shows you a certain way of how societal norms essentially break who you are. It's terrifying at some points, psychologically at least, and it makes you question, what are you? <laughs> what are you in this speck of a world? Despite that, there will always be hope. The theme of hope, faith, and faith will always stay in these movies. That is chapter 1, The Stone Ocean Ma- Aftermath Saga. Chapter 2, The Other World's Movies in Development. That is the second chapter of this series. Batman and Spider-Man. I have no friggin' idea how I'm gonna do this. Just saying. But here we go. Spider-Man, the version from Earth-615 of the movie multiverse is kidnapped by a version of his childhood hero the batman and is told that his world has been destroyed because of his wish from dr stephen strange that is the storyline in no way home however this bat- batman isn't who peter expected him to be and peter struggles to make sure to bring sense back into the mind of the batman as they, vin- they venture into the unknown and search for the enemy known as the superior one rumored to have destroyed batman's universe it's a spin-off and a love letter send-off to the entirety of the cancelled DCEU and the original era of MCU. It's a dramedy. This was heavily inspired by Deadpool and Wolverine. It was also heavily inspired by Batman vs. Superman and No Way Home. It is a very heartbreaking movie in my opinion. i written it so in such a way that both characters are made understood despite of their past terrible actions and their um their terrible characterization by their respective universes in my opinion at least you will grow to love these characters even though one of them can be really annoying and the other one can be really stubborn 
you could actually learn to love these characters. They are they are a good mentor and student relationship. It's sort of like a mentor student relationship kind of thing going on here where Batman would act as the mentor and Spider-Man would act as his Morty. A bit more serious and sadder and has a somber tone. It is truly a love letter to everything I've watched in DCEU and the MCU. Or the or original era of the MCU. St. Jojo and the Gospel Truth might be the best one I've made. A seemingly optimistic but depressed St. Jojo is brought by the Citadel of Smiths back to his home universe to save his earth and defeat if the evil or our morning star. It is described as a social kind commentary on social media and media in general and how it affects public opinion. It's a dark comedy drama movie. The main protagonist is Saint Jojo. Main antagonist, this is where we introduce Aurora Morningstar. If you've been reading my AO3, Aurora Morningstar is by far the most hated character there. I, I think. People hate her. <laughs> She is a terrible, terrible, bad person. And, well, the movie will focus on uh, as, as, a, as a parody and satire of Dune. And it will be satiring most of the modern day culture on religion, on media, on social media. And strangely enough, each controversy and drama culture, and even cancel culture, it will also be satiring um, uh, certain vlog websites, blog websites that I know of, even YouTube. Finally, the Jazz Fusion, Spookies and Pookies. This is the final movie I've made. A few years after the first movie sets the character's new journey straight with love. MJ, who was alone most of his life, falls in love with Rena. A new student in college. A pair begin a relationship. Meanwhile, Finn searches for love. Darwin begins dating Carrie again. SpongeBob works for his love of his new job. The Krusty Sponge Industries. And Patrick gets a job, dog. Meanwhile, Gumball and Jake, who are both depressed and alone. No, not going there. They simply investigate a pair of serial killers. One who had been killing Vesen and the other who had been killing children. Who had for some reason are working together is a dark comedy drama movie that focuses more on character buildup and growth for the fusion years and maintain maintaining its satirical humor. It still makes fun of everything. Main protagonist MJ Gashigata, main antagonist the Eradicator, new character, and Burn Trap. Burn Trap from FNAF. Yep, we're going there. We are going to make fun of FNAF. <laughs> well, it it will mostly make fun of woke culture and um, the, the corporation industry this time. And Hollywood, most likely. It will make fun of how Hollywood is exists, basically, in such a way that, well, it uses, at this point, extreme measures in order for them, well, at least in my point of view, extreme measures, in order to, like, garner support from their fans. Which causes more chaos. Hmm. And other planned movies. Dark and Hercules. Jump Force. Made and Made in Heaven. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Anyway. I will be now assessing each of the characters I have created. Miguel Jojo. Miguel Jojo is essentially... Based on, well, Jotaro Kujo. He has the exact same personality, but however, ex more, more over exaggerated, I should say. And Miguel Jojo is very violent, arrogant, not, yeah, arrogant, and angry. And he's balanced out by his best friend, Saint Jojo, who is also his variant. Strangely enough, despite being a Jotaro Kujo variant, he acts nothing like Jotaro Kujo. This Saint Jojo is humorous, maniacal, and is ironically, well, the most terrifying character I have ever written. He is a more violent version of Miguel Jojo. 
strange enough, even though he does not kill. Antonia Zeppeli, she is a highly dangerous and violent. Wait, no, that's the other character. Oh, yes, Antonia Zeppeli. She. I'm still developing her. <laughs> as well as Jessica Polnareff. And also Jadan Nagara. I won't I won't show their personalities yet. After all. Because there is still so much to them. Rather than just writing them off as uh well revealing them, I mean, in this video. Then again it could change. The script could change. Now the problem is well these characters, you would be seeing them for three movies. Hopefully you would like them. They are more or less superheroes, which is strange. But it's a more realistic depiction of superheroes. Which is, they have themes similar to Civil War and The Boys, strangely enough. Now, it's just that, well... Returning to the jazz fusion, let's say M.J. Higashikata. He's optimistic. He can be toxically positive sometimes. But over time, he becomes more traumatized by the reality of the situation and the madness of his peers. He realizes that, oh shit, we're going to fucking die unless we defeat this bad guy. And when he realizes that, that, he eventually learns inner strength. He is originally an optimist, a toxic positivist. But I don't think that's the right term, but... Well, he eventually learns his mistake. And finds more resilience in the face of... The impending doom of reality. Though it sounds terrifying, sounds pessimistic, it actually isn't. Because despite what fate does to each of these characters, despite how the challenges may seem like they're pointless, it proves that these characters, their optimism, these characters sense of self and strength and resolve proves them as heroes despite the odds and I actually like that I love that me writing that sure that sounds like any other sci-fi fantasy whatever but I took this as seriously as possible and yeah I don't think I'll be, I don't know, I'm not sure if I'll be writing or turning it into a comic book, I don't know. Part of me wants to turn it into a comic book, a manga, another part of me wants to turn it into a book series, I I've already done that, but I haven't garnered enough support for that. I mean, I have, I have, I have an audience in AO3 that... I am sorry guys if you're watching this. I have I have neglected I feel like I've neglected you guys. I'm sorry, I love you. But yeah. I really will continue that. The reason why I've halted for a while, I don't want it to end. It's about to end the whole series. I've been planning this huge finale for months now, or actually for two years. And I'm afraid I have been drafting that for a while now. And I don't know how to write the perfect ending for that. And sorry to the MHA fans who really wanted Deku to, to be there. Because Deku was not there. <laughs> Even though chapters back, I promised he'll be there. He wasn't. And I also, I also didn't add Naruto there or Luffy. That's because they will belong in another fanfiction I'm working on. But 
for this as of now. This is my focus, the animated movie universe. I will finish that very... No, not, not soon enough. But I'm just stumped with a lot of work nowadays. So, um, that's it. That is my fanfiction universe. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? I don't know. <laughs> if we're going to talk about Batman and Spider-Man, by the way. I have no idea how I'm going to use them. How, gonna, how I'm going to make them different enough for them to not be considered IPs. Or at least I could like go around it, you know. Because these characters are very, very similar to their original characterization in the movies. Very similar. And Batman does have a redemption there. Spider-Man does understand what it means to be Spider-Man. Similar to... It has themes from Spider-Verse as well. I forgot that. And that is by far my favorite out of all. But the best one might be seeing Jojo and the Gospel Truth. That felt more like a Dune movie. But yeah, that's it. If you have any suggestions, please place them in the comments below. If you think this should just be a comic or anything else, again, place them below. Comments below. And um, like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much for all the support i'm glad that people actually find my crap hilarious cringe comedy but this is the real me this is how i actually talk and yeah <laughs> thank you